Park, tell me how you first came to the game of golf. Who put the first golf club in your hand? Well, actually, it was just a process of my mom and dad were trying to find a home for their growing family. I have, I have three brothers, four boys. I was the third of the four, and we lived in a two-bedroom, one-bathroom house, and dad said it's time to move, and we, my parents didn't play golf, but they found a house on a dirt road, and across the street was the 14th hole of a Donald Ross public golf course. So that's my start into golf. Uh, since the time we were little enough to climb under the fence and go play the last four holes before dark, before we got caught, to picking crabgrass for free greens fees, for mowing greens, driving the tractor, setting sprinklers. Uh, I learned how to play before I knew it was hard. <laughs> now you've had a storied professional golf career, 10-time tour winner, the Players' Championship here, Tour Championship. What, uh, when you look back at your playing career, what uh, do you remember most about it? Uh, wow, it, w it was wonderful. I mean, I still, when I went here, I remember saying in the presentation, I can't believe I get paid to do this. I remember one year, uh, that might sum it up, I was playing at Augusta in the last round, paired with Seve. And uh, we had an outside chance to win if we got off to a fast start. And if you know Augusta, you've got to get off to an early start on one, two, three. And I was one or two over, and I caught myself kind of pouting heading down the fifth fairway. And I looked over to my right, and I saw my parents walking down the fairway, and uh, my brothers and their families, my nephews and nieces, Patty, and two of our daughters. Our son wasn't born yet. And uh, then I saw a Seve striking figure with his red shirt on, and I just started giggling. And my caddy said, why are you giggling? You're two over. I said, yeah, but come on. I'm disappointed with this start. But I'm playing the Masters, one of 14 times. I'm playing at Augusta with Seve. What would I have paid if I had been a successful businessman to do this? So it seems like uh, whenever I'd catch myself ducking my head a bit or pouting, I'd realize how grateful I was. So the whole experience has been amazing. You know, winning is exciting. Uh, uh, but when I won here, I made the comment at the presentation, I can't believe I get paid for doing this. So I, I've always felt that way, very grateful that I could do something I loved and, and make a living doing it. What was the impetus to transitioning to a golf course architect? I didn't transition into a golf course architect. My brothers and I started a landscape business back in the late 60s. And I went to work for my brother when I came home from New York in school. And um, I was actually designing landscape plans when he kicked me out of the office and said, you're too good a player to be doing this. And I played the mini tours back then, got my tour card. And I designed my first golf course, the Ravines, before I got my tour card. I actually won Doral uh, right around the time of the grand opening. So it was a passion for me, landscape design, horticulture, working with my hands in the dirt. I love it to this day. I work in my yard. I'm a gardener. I like it. So getting to design golf courses and play golf, it was there was no better thing. And, and the playing didn't make me an architect, but I got to see the greatest courses all over the world. So I had a, just a library of memories of what I wanted to do and the things I liked. What in your mind is your best design work? Uh, that's a really good question. I'm proud of all of them. I learned all along the way. I mean, I you know, it depends on the budget you have too and the piece of land because I think the greatest golf courses are what nature gives us, not what an architect gives us. And as soon as I say that, look at Pebble Beach, look at Shinnecock, look at Augusta, the most beautiful pieces of land. Nature gives you three things. It can give you elevation, it can give you vegetation, and it can give you water. So when you can get movement, and you can get elevation with beautiful tree coverage or an ocean or a stream or beautiful water. That's all you can ask for. So when I look back, I mean, I'm proud of all of them. I learned from my mistakes. Every time I did one, I thought as soon as I was done, I could have done it better. But uh, I'm, pr I'm proud of all of them. They're like your kids. Now we're here at a very special night, the Taste of Golf with the First Tee of North Florida. We just heard a great speech by young Joshua. Wasn't it good? What does the first tee mean to you and why are you so involved with it? It means a lot to me because I know what golf did for me growing up. And I, there wasn't an official first tee, but gentlemen, individuals at that public course I grew up on took me under their arm. My dad didn't play, I had a great mom and dad, so they gave me the core of how I should act. But they kind of nurtured me, some of these people at the golf club. And then um, my oldest daughter, Addison McCumber, Addison Crenshaw went to UNF, University of North Florida, and the golf coach was a friend and he wanted to do something to attract recruits. Mm -hmm. So my brothers and I donated the design and built a four hole golf course on the property at University of North Florida with a practice facility and we made that a first tee facility when we opened it. Our second daughter Megan worked for the first tee for five or six years at the world headquarters in the communications department. My kids have grown up around the game. I love the game and the values it teaches. 
It teaches the integrity, the honesty, the perseverance. And, and I think it's the game is the conduit. But it's not about the game. It's just the avenue we use to teach kids. And you heard Joshua moan and go, how beautiful was that for a 13-year-old? And, and the respect, he talked about, that's the one he's working on, the quality of respect. And so many people have lost their way, I think, in the world we live in. So when an organization like this is willing to work with young people, use golf, which is a wonderful game you can play for a lifetime. doesn't matter how big you are, little, what color, what size you are. It brings everybody together and learn how to deal with the adversity of the game, then you can learn how to do it in life. My older brother, Larry, gave me the Ben Hogan book when I was 12 years old. He inscribed that golf is a lot like life. The more you learn and understand about it, the easier it is to meet its challenges. What, what does golf and life have in common for you? Well, there's a lot of things to me. I mean, I, I think you, you, you learn how to deal with adversity. Golf is one big game of adversity. Very few balls go right where you're looking. They don't find a divot, don't rattle in the trees, don't find a pond occasionally. So do you give up? Do you get mad? Do you want to break the rules? Or do you figure, I've, I've just got to get better at this. I've got to learn another way to get what I want to get accomplished. I've got to be patient. I've got to persevere. I've got to continue to, to apply those core values, those principles that make you a better person. And the other thing is, I've never seen another sport. I truly enjoyed winning. But I had no problem if I played in the final round and someone beat me to go up and truly be happy for them because I knew how hard it was to do it. We don't see that in other sports. And I think that goes back to respect and love of neighbor. I mean, do I want to have the most successful career? Do I want to be the best? Well, it's a goal, but I've got to be able to show respect for the other person when they accomplish something. And if we would treat one another with respect, like you're supposed to do in golf, the etiquette, all those things that go with golf. I mean, I would tell a guy, Jack Nicklaus instilled in me when I asked him some tips when I first got on tour, he said, Mark, I hope you play great. I played with him in the last round at Doral in 1985 when I was lucky enough to win. And the whole day when I would make a great shot, he would go, well done. And I would think, wow, this is really neat that he's rooting me on, but he still wanted to beat me. So I mean, in life, I want my neighbors to be happy. I want their families to be successful. I want them to be healthy. I want their businesses to do well, and I want to do well too. I don't have to wish bad on somebody. And I think golf brings that out in you. I really do. Well, Mr. McCumber, thank you very much for being a special part of Andy's Golf and Travel Diary. And thank you for entertaining and inspiring me and others, both with your play as a golfer and your design as a golf course architect. Well, that's kind of you. Every bit of it has been my pleasure. Thank you.